I wanted to make a video on how much production you can expect from a manual mill. So we're at a time when a lot of people are buying portable sawmills, um, band sawmills to, you know, start milling for people or uh, just mill for themselves for their own property. So what I wanted to do is just kind of show what you can expect from these things. Cause I think it's easy to get lost in the marketing fluff of how many board feet per hour each mill is capable of. And I'm going to make this video just to kind of show how much you can expect, especially if you're a first timer um, starting out, if you have a manual mill like this, because you're probably not going to hit the numbers that you see or come anywhere close to them, actually, that you see from the manufacturers. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to, I've got logs piled up around here. I'm going to put the camera up. I'm going to do some time-lapse video so that you can see how long this takes. I'm, I'm probably going to work for maybe three hours. I want to incorporate a, a blade change because I'm running on an old blade here. I'm going to do a few more logs with it. I'm going to put a new one on. I'm going to switch over from doing pine logs to some hardwood because there's a difference between hard and softwood in terms of how long it takes, how heavy the logs are. I hope this gives you an idea of what you can expect if you go out and buy a mill yourself. One big note and big caveat is that I'm not showing all of the effort it takes to get logs from the forest to your mill or wherever you're getting them from. There's a lot of work and effort that goes into just sourcing your logs and getting them to the mill. Today's gonna be pretty much just the sawing part with a little bit of offboarding. took 16 minutes and I got four two by eights that are 12 feet long and that's again with everything right up here by the mill. So that took 12 minutes for four two by eights. 
uh, just to cut. Now I'm gonna have to scrape them, spray them, treat them, and then go stack them on the pile. log is 18 feet long and that the large end is 14 inches in diameter probably closer to 12 at the small end So we got that one on there. Again, this one's 18 feet long. I struggled with it a bit and I, I did it on purpose because I wanted to show just sort of reality of when you're milling, it's not always easy and it doesn't always work perfectly. Um, so there is a bend in the middle of this, probably right about there. So I'm gonna make a chainsaw cut right about there so I can get um, a straight log out of here because then I won't have as much waste. If you try to cut through that bend, you waste a lot. So let me go to where the bend is, and see about where I'm at. So it's at 10 foot. So I'm gonna go 10 feet, four inches, with my chainsaw cut. which will put it right about here and I can cut it on the mill. Just make sure that things are out of the way of the chainsaw. And uh, then I'll be able to mill two different logs. And I should be able to get much more lumber out of this than if I were to try to just make really long 18 foot boards. So I'll get a 10 footer and a little less than eight feet on this one. <laughs> You want to leave a gap because in with a long mill like this one big advantage is you can put these put multiple logs on the mill at once and i can cut the short end and stop before i get to the next one so that's why you need to separate them leave a gap so i'm able to stop safely and i'm not crashing into the next log and i can just kind of change my settings and just go in line um, or i can just mill one log at a time the short one first and then the, lo the long one next i'll what i'm going to try here is just milling them all in a line. two logs now that are ready for the final cuts. Uh, this one's gonna be uh, probably four two by tens. One on the top might be a little, have a little bit of rounded edges. And, and then the other log is gonna be four two by eights. So that's what I'm getting out of this thing. So there'll be about eight boards total.
Just like that, we're done. Um, so it's a little more efficient when you have more logs on the mill. So you can do that with a long mill. So now I'm gonna work on the hickory. I just put a new blade on and yeah, we'll roll this one up on here. I might try to roll both of them up, um, we'll see. But I'll just show you the difference with the, a large hickory log uh, versus these you know, real long straight perfect softwood uh, white pine and white spruce trees. hickory was much much heavier than the pines so it's eight feet long 18 inches in diameter uh, I will put a graphic right here on how much that thing weighs so you saw me struggling a little bit more with that one one because it's a really hard wood and it's tough to get the some bite on these uh, log cans here all right, so I'm going to hook it up and then start milling. So I'm looking to do four inch thick cuts off of this thing because I think I might use a first stair tread. I'm not sure. I'm just going to kind of do a layout here. It had a few cracks in it. I'm trying to get those horizontal so I kind of cut with them so they're not cutting my boards in half the, the cracks aren't they're not running perpendicular I'm going to try to get them parallel so maybe I can work around them we'll see I don't know how good this log is going to be because there was metal in the bottom of it I had to cut it above the barbed wire fence there's an old fence that was growing into it so we'll see what other goodies are in here over here to show you this it's pretty nice looking so especially after I've been milling pine all this time hickory is really pretty and you can see the detail here and it's very hard wood too so I put a new blade on but I do have some cracking going on uh, and I'm gonna roll this thing now and it should get rid of this top part that has the rot I'm gonna try to get cut down through that a little bit and at least get to this crack line here uh, most of it so we'll see how bad the crack is because um, you can see on the end here there was some cracking this tree was knocked over with an excavator it could have sustained damage through it but we'll find out <music> What I will do is start at uh, probably 16, cut off a flitch, and then go to uh, 14, and I should get a nice big two by piece in there. We'll see.
let's go have a look at this thing. This is just so much prettier. And I've been asked to make a, a table behind a couch for my brother's house here. And since this came from the property, it'd be kind of neat. This end has some cracking in it right here. So we might have to cut this down to size, but it's still pretty, pretty nice. <laughs> So here's this hickory on the side, so you can kind of see it better with the light. It's really pretty. This is my first hickory log that I've cut. And this came right from the center of our home site, so we're try I'm trying to figure out what to do with this one, what cuts I should make, because it's looking really nice for stair treads or benches or something. So yeah, we'll figure it out, but it's much more of a bear to work with than the pine. Thank you.